Members of the Acting Lord Mayor. Council acknowledged that we're meeting. <laughs> City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 14th of May 2019. The Acting Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly to the council by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on traditional land of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and that we pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and we acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We'd also like to extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city and its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the, on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Might take a seat. Thank you. First, just for uh, apologies, we only have an apology from the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor, Sandy Vashaw. Uh, we move on to item four, confirmation of minutes. If I can have a councillor please move to confirm the minutes of the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Seconded by Councillor Canole. Any debate or discussion? I'll put that to vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Move on to item five. Uh, we don't have any deputations uh, for tonight. Item six, petitions. We also do not have any petitions that have been recorded tonight for the meeting. Hence, I'll move to item seven, report of the committee and advice recommendation from uh, also other committees. In item 7.1, the recommendation of the committee, the way we will deal with those items is recommendation one and recommendation two will be dealt with separately. So I'll ask for a mover first for recommendation one. Councillor Kuros, would you like to move that? As it is. Do you mind standing and using your mic, please? Thank you. Are you moving them all together or are you going to do them one by one? No, we're going to do with them one, one item at a time. So recommendation one, I'll put out and reserve for the time being. Yep. Okay. Uh, recommendation two. Um, hang on, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, you need a, a seconder for that as well. So recommendation one is with regards to the Adelaide Parklands Authority. So Councillor Kouros is moving that as it is. You're correct. Sorry, I apologise. Do I have a seconder for that recommendation? Seconded by Councillor Ho. Uh, Councillor Kouros, the mic is yours if you wish to speak. Sorry, Acting Lord Mayor, if this is a remuneration, I'll have to excuse myself as I'm not sure. Can you please declare your conflict clearly, Councillor? Uh, yes, I'm on the Parklands Authority and I'm remunerated by that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. So we'll just wait for Councillor Hyde and Councillor Moran to exit the chamber. Back to you, Councillor Kuros, to speak as the mover of the motion. You reserve your right. Um, Councillor, you reserve your right. Any debate or discussion? Councillor Martin. Yes, uh, thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. I'd like to move an amendment. Um, and it is to one. Has that uh, amendment been circulated, Councillor? Uh, no, it has not. Okay, I'll, I'll take that from you. Um, uh, one is as is, but after authority board members uh, insert the words, except for elected members of the City of Adelaide. Any other changes? 
That's it, Lord Mayor. Can I get a second of this motion? Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Look, this is uh, another of those uh, proposals to come before Council where uh, ratepayers are saying, are you kidding me? This is a substantial increase to the fees that are paid to the, uh, the members of APLA. Now, I have heard it defended, but it's very hard to defend an increase of about 300%. Now, if it were just the rate that is paid per hour to the members, then I could buy the arguments that this is nothing more than CPI. But there's a big bonus in here, and it is that every member of APLA will receive three hours pay for reading their papers. Three hours pay for reading their papers. The meetings, the meetings barely go an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. So the members of APLA are to receive three times the amount they would receive for just attending the meeting. Now, I can't accept that, and the ratepayers I've spoken to have said to me they can't either. They find it controversial. Now, it would be less controversial if the elected members did not receive this amounts, if the Lord Mayor did not accept it. The Lord Mayor, since 2008, has never received payment for attending APLA. It's been regarded as part of the job. Now it's proposed to be significantly more than the whatever it is the Lord Mayor receives. And honestly, I don't know. I think it's something in the order of 200,000 packaged up, includes I'm pay. Have that corrected on public record, if you like, Councillor? Sorry, you acting Lord Mayor. I understand it's around $160,000. Uh, and super goes on top of that. Oh, I'd need to take advice on that. Uh, and there's an allowance on top of that with a credit card. No, look, I, I'm advised it was 160,000, but I can get that information. And there's a limo too that comes in occasionally. Councillor, and we've received advice. That's clear. I don't know. I understand. I'm I'm accepting the advice. I'm just observing that there are add-ons, um, including the staff, of course. And we can't forget the staff who are here. I mean, there's a, a speech writer, a political advisor. Councillor, do you mind speaking to the motion, please? Oh, I am. I am. I'm saying that the remuneration and the, the benefits of the Lord Meralty are significant already without an additional fee from APLA. But additionally, it's being paid to the council representative. So there is no sense of community in this. This is just straight out payment. In the real world, people do these sorts of things because they have a strong feeling for community. They want to contribute something. And Councillor Sims here, Councillor Donovan, they go along to reconciliation committee meetings. They don't hand a bill in at the end of it. Councillor Kira over here attends public out round table meetings. He doesn't stand up at the end of the meeting and say, here's my bill. So my argument is, in these circumstances, it is excessive. It should not stand. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sims. Thank you, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, and might I welcome you to the chair this evening? Thank you. Um, look, I uh, support um, Councillor Martin's uh, amendment um, tonight. I, I was very vocal at the committee meeting when we uh, discussed this. I think this does uh, stick in the craw for a lot of ratepayers. You know, most people in the City of Adelaide have not had an increase in their own wages for many, many years. And to be looking at what is in effect a quadruple pay rise for our um, elected representatives on the Adelaide Parklands Authority seems to me to be a, a slap in the face to our residents and ratepayers, many of whom are doing it really tough at the moment. Um, as Councillor Martin has said, the Lord Mayor already has significant remuneration by virtue of uh, the role. I'm certainly not being critical of the uh, Lord Mayor personally um, at all, but it, it's a, a, a comment, I think that's a fair comment to make about the role, which is well remunerated, um, and I don't think it's appropriate for them to get icing on the cake in the form of um, this significant increase. And as Councillor Martin said, it isn't a minor increase, it's significant. There aren't many uh, committees or boards associated with this council where you get paid for reading time, particularly 
if you're the Lord Mayor and you're in full-time employment um, of this council. So I think this is a bridge too far. Uh, I think it's out of step with community expectations and um, I encourage members to support this. We've had some discussion around our budget and many members of this council have championed austerity. Well, you know, the age of austerity starts at home and we can't well be talking about tightening our belts and, um, and wanting to reduce spending and then at the same time find uh, money in council's coffers for a significant pay rise for our own representatives. I don't think that's a very good look. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Any other remarks or debate from councillors? Councillor Connell? I mean, uh, of course, I mean, we, the public eye, have always, uh, you know, we have to think about, you know, how the perceptions and things like that about how we, uh, how we are within council. But we also have to uh, have a, a particular policy that covers the activities that we all do. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, out of virtue of the council. I mean, I've got uh, two uh, positions on committees, etc., that are, you know, we do that uh, gratuitously. But there are sufficient positions within council where there are expectations uh, uh, for decision making, etc. And there's quite a number of them that have uh, remuneration that is, uh, you know, that you're entitled to. And those are uh, remunerations that are uh, embedded in that committee arrangement or that board arrangement. So it's very difficult to, to uh, take, say, this one uh, as, because it is an, an important uh, position. And, you know, but there are similar positions that are already, uh, which have councils, uh, uh, you know, active in them and having those board positions where they are being remunerated. And again, I suppose, uh, or at what point, uh, you know, do we now uh, say this this particular board is acceptable, this this other board isn't? And so, if we take it from that, we have to have at least a consistent policy around these sorts of things uh, that will at least give uh, some uh, a decent guidance. And of course, uh, if we're looking at the other uh, boards, and there are quite a few of them, and committees where we are getting uh, some form of remuneration, well, uh, at what point is this one different to those? Uh, and I mean, at this point in time, uh, it has been determined not by us, but I take it by the administration that it falls into the uh, the other category where you know there is uh, you know uh, some money attached to that. And I mean, it is. Uh, and if it if they haven't had an increase since what 2007, if I believe, um, well, if we wait long enough. Um, any any increase will be uh, massive, depending on how long we have neglected uh, to keep uh, up those uh, those sums. And let us not forget too, in the main, with this particular type of board, we've now taken it out of a political sphere and having uh, appointees, uh, and now uh, more independent people have been uh, placed into that. And there is a and there is expectation now of a, about professionalism uh, and much more about uh, you know the, the individual values that they bring to this. So I think. Uh, again, in this context, um, you, you have to look at it and say, well, uh, at what point, um, you know, are they uh, our own representatives who are now, we elect them to this position and we elect them on the basis of what we consider to be someone that can contribute in an equal manner to the other. And there is an expectation that they actually uh, do all the homework and all the, that is required for them and that they will represent our interest on this so that uh, uh, they, when they're making the, a, a, you know, some guidance for us, that we can actually get uh, some uh, good uh, information back and some good uh, you know, motions, etc. So I, I would uh, say that it is, I don't obviously speak for that in that case, but uh, we, other than sometimes some guidance across all these sort of uh, uh, opportunities. Right on time, <laughs> Mitchell. Um, thank you, councillors. Um, Councillor Bramzetta, before you speak this year, I just requested to clarify a comment, so I'm just going to ask him to do that. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, I just want to be really clear. Um, Council approved uh, the Charter um, on the 28th of August 2018. That Charter provided expressly that Council members would be remunerated or would, would have a, an allowance as a result of that. So the motion that you are considering at the moment, whilst not unlawful, um, certainly overrides the provisions of the Charter. So I just need to make that clear for you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Ramsey. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, given that we spend about 17 to 18 million dollars on maintenance on the parklands, I think what we are spending here on the sitting fees uh, is actually quite a good investment. Um, when you look at uh, the APLA members, uh, we're paying them for their expert advice. And so uh, given that 
I don't know what the sitting fees are going to equate to, but if it works out to, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year, I think uh, uh, that is actually a worthwhile um, investment given that the parkland maintenance uh, costs us in the order of 70 to 80 million a year. Councillors, any other debate or discussion? Councillors, Anna. I, I'd be happy to support this motion if it was um, expressed to the Lord Mayor. I think it's quite reasonable um, to exclude the Lord Mayor from additional payment given uh, that role and not speak to the person, but to the role that is a full-time role. I think that's quite reasonable. Um, in my opinion, though, additional time spent by councillors in these sorts of debates, actually, and these sorts of roles, it does take an enormous amount of time. And I, having gone through that, Briefly, through my brief period on APLA, um, there were several areas that came up for discussion that I had very little knowledge on and did have to spend quite a bit of time researching. So I actually think it's perfectly legitimate to remunerate council members, but I absolutely take the point made by Councillor Martin that it is a bit of a stretch to add the Lord Mayor into that. So um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm in a slightly tenuous position with this amendment because I would go halfway toward it, but not all the way. Um, but uh, without being able to, would you vary? There we go. A variation to make it specific to the Lord Mayor rather than what members. So the mover and the seconder both have to accept. I'm not inclined to accept the variation of the motion, especially when a debate sort of ensued um, on the issue. Um, however, if the mover and the seconder wants to accept it as a variation, that's fine, but the debate changes significantly with that regard. And my concern is elected members that have already spoken will not get the opportunity to speak to that variation because it's a significant change. So my advice to you, councillor, is to move an amendment to this item, which will give an opportunity to other councillors that have already spoken to speak to your amendment. No, hang on, Lord Mayor. Um, Acting Lord Mayor. Acting Lord Mayor. I'm not on $160,000, councillor. I'm, Just like you. I'm, um, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to hear that you're not on $160,000. No. I'm sure you'll be worth every penny of it. I appreciate it. Um, look, uh, variations are common in this council. They happen during the course of debate. And it is common for the person sitting in that chair to say, will you accept a variation? And for the mover and seconder to accept it. Sure. Um, I'm not prepared. That's all that's happening here. I appreciate that. And if you'd appreciate um, the chair scenario, I'm explaining to you very clearly to why I'm not accepting the variation, because there are three members that have already spoken to that motion, thinking you are covering elected members only. And I will think it'd be unfair if this is varied and it will not give the opportunity to the people that have already spoken to speak about that new position. I hope you understand that, Councillor Donna. No, hang, hang Councillor on, Martin, me. please. No, no, where, where in the standing orders yep. uh, are you referring to? I, uh, that's really important, and I'm sure that the staff... Yeah, look, I've, I've already spoken to the staff. Um, if I choose not to accept this as a variation, I choose not to accept it as a variation, so you just need to accept that. It's the same outcome, um, Councillor, if you move it, as an amendment and get a seconder, everyone gets to speak to it again, which is fair. Councillor Sorry, Sons. Acting Lord Mayor, just to uh, clarify the procedure. So are you suggesting that Councillor Donovan moves an amendment? Yeah, sure. Okay. To the amendment. To the amendment. To the amendment, yeah, which is fine. But if you're happy to do that. Yep. So you move it, you get a seconder. I move the amendment as spoken, so moving, making the amendment that it is accepting the Lord Mayor rather than all elected members. So you can you can flag um, an amendment in that regard. So Councillor Martin can sum up on this, and if this motion was to fail, then you can move an amendment in that regard. So, which will give the opportunity for members to speak again on the item, which I think is a fair arrangement. So, councillors, are you flagging to move an amendment if this fails? Excellent. So we have that opportunity. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours to sum up. Well, Acting Lord Mayor, this is a very peculiar ruling and one which uh, sets a precedent, but I, I look forward to seeing it applied on other occasions. Uh, look, uh, 
I, uh, I remember the, uh, the day the CEO referred to in August 2018 that the Charter came to Council and I had great reservations about that Charter too. But by the by, I do want to thank uh, Councillors Canole and uh, Abraham Zadar for contributing to this debate. Their contribution is always worthwhile and I am particularly keen to uh, address the issues they raise in terms of remuneration. Um, Councillor Canole asking, well, you know, what is the difference? We have board positions where people are paid, and he, of course, is on a board, uh, which is a paid position, the Run Ball Management Authority, um, which is a substantial remuneration, about $1,000 a week or something of that sort. Um, no, 800 700 Well, anyway, it's about a few hundred dollars, anyway. And the significance is that the Rundle Mall Management Authority actually manages money. It manages millions of dollars, the collection and the expenditure of money. Now, uh, Councillor Abrahamsad has said, well, you know, there's $18 million in the parklands. This is a great investment. We're paying people to manage the parklands. The Adelaide Parklands Authority, with respect, has no budget, no budget, whatever. We asked the authority earlier this year for legal advice, which might have cost 10, 15, 20 uh, thousand, or perhaps dollars, who knows? They didn't have the money. They don't have the money. The parklands rely entirely on this body for the expenditure of money and for the management. The Parklands Authority is merely an advisory body and its recommendations are accepted or overturned by council. So it has a very low level of responsibility. It has no financial accountability. And yet there is this reverence that's extended to this, uh, this authority. Uh, and I do respect their advice. I do think that they are a useful body in terms of providing a filter for council. But make no mistake, all the decisions rest with this council, not with those members. And those members have turned up with barely expenses paid let alone three hours of reading time. Three hours of reading time for a one hour meeting. Is it any wonder that the ratepayers of this city are saying, what the hell is going on there? Now look, I urge you all to vote for this motion. If you don't, then I'll accept the variation or the alternative motion that, uh, that Councillor Donovan is going to propose. But it is plainly unjustifiable it is likely to bring this chamber into disrepute if you approve a motion for people who are already paid for what they do. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, with that, I put the amendment before you to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Martin's amendment, all those against, that amendment is lost. Um, Councillor Donovan, you have the opportunity now to move uh, another amendment. Uh, if you don't mind providing the words. So, as is, um, except just accept the Lord Mayor of the City of Adelaide rather than elected members. Removing elected members. Okay, that's all right. Take your time just to be clear so councillors know what they're voting on. And I'll seek a seconder for this. Councillor Sims. Councillor Donovan, would you like to speak to your amendment? Oh, sorry, Councillor Sims, you've already seconded the initial, so I'd seek another seconder for Councillor Donovan. I'm guessing Councillor um, uh, Councillor Martin can't second either. So is there a seconder for Councillor Donovan's motion? Or amendment. In the absence of a seconder, that lapses. Uh, well, Lord Mayor, can I just highlight what acting I... Acting Lord Mayor. Uh, sorry, acting yeah. Lord Mayor, point of order. I just want to highlight what I think has been a level of... Um, more trickery, actually, because we were led to believe that uh, a variation couldn't be accepted and Councillor Donovan could then move the motion. But it's clear that that's deprived her of a seconder, which is regrettable because uh, it means there won't be the support to deal with the issue. Well, the other way to look at if this, Councillor Sims, is there's no support from the council to consider that amendment. Yeah, if, you, if, you'll allow, if you'll allow, I'll second for the purposes of discussion. Thank right. you, Councillor Kerr. Um, Councillor Donovan, you have a seconder, if you'd wish to speak to your motion, to your amendment. 
I think I've made the point. Um, I think that it's quite reasonable to give remuneration to the time and the consideration that is required in this role, having been through it very briefly. Um, however, I think it makes sense, as Councillor Martin initially proposed, um, that the Lord Mayor is not included in that, given that role is already uh, well remunerated and it is in a full-time capacity and um, the APLA meetings do fit within that brief. Um, so, hence, hence the variation. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Jarrett, Other councillors, would you like to speak to Member Councillor Sims? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thanks, oh, Councillor. Thank uh, sorry. I'm giving you a promotion, uh, uh, acting, de uh, acting Lord Mayor. You should, should take it, enjoy it. Um, thank you, Councillor Kira, for um, seconding the uh, motion. Look, just to add my support to um, Councillor Donovan's uh, statement. I mean, I would have supported, oh, I did support Councillor Martin's uh, original proposal, but this strikes me as a, a good compromise. The Lord Mayor is well remunerated for the, the work that she does. This is not a, a criticism of um, the Lord Mayor. I do note, of course, she, she's away at the moment. It's regrettable we're having this discussion um, with her and not here. But I, I do think it's not a good look for the council to be um, allowing someone uh, in that role to get two bites of the cherry. Um, we have limited resources. The Lord Mayor is well remunerated for the work that they do. Um, and uh, I think this seems like a very sensible proposal. Thank you. Councillor Martin, would you speak? I'm uh, uh, Councillor Ho. That's okay, I got to see you first. Oh, well, that's so. fine. Okay, well, look, thank you very much for that courtesy. Um, uh, look, Acting Lord Mayor, um, I, I will accept uh, this variation, and I do encourage other members of the council, no matter how they're intending to vote, to consider this because it seems sensible. And I dare say, if the Lord Mayor were here and not on holidays, then she would probably accept that. I think she would see that as a very reasonable solution to community concern. Can you actually speak on behalf of the Lord Mayor? She's not here to actually... Well, you're fair, fair point. Um, oh, well, Councillor, maybe make no assumptions. No, no, no let, me, let, me, let me rephrase that, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, uh, to accommodate my uh, uh, colleague. Um, uh, I speculate, if the Lord Mayor were here, knowing her character and her qualities, that she would say this is a very reasonable compromise. It addresses not only the concerns of ratepayers about the unnecessary expenditure of money, um, but it also addresses the issue that no Lord Mayor, since the formulation of APLA in 2008, has ever received any extra money for this. And in addition, it addresses the issue of it being such a substantial amount. That is to say, payment of $70 or $80 an hour plus three hours reading time. So conceivably there can be four, four and a half hours pay, which roughly equates to a bit over a time and a half the aged pension. No, it's about almost the same as the aged pension. That is from one meeting, there are pensioners not getting that in effect. The payment contemplated is substantially more than the new start allowance. So I, I, I think knowing the Lord Mayor, um, my speculation is if she were here, she'd be saying, yes, that is too much. I will not accept that. And therefore, uh, I would ask you all to consider that and, um, and to vote in favour of this amendment from Councillor Donovan. Members, we've debated this item a fair bit. Councillor Ho, you haven't spoken yet, if you wish to speak. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Well, look, I understand that the Lord Mayor is a full-time role, but for all the Lord Mayors, I, I mean, all the Lord Mayors and all the former Lord Mayors I, I know, all right, all of them work more than a full-time job, more than 40 hours a week. For something, for payments like this, it's not significant for such an important role. 160,000 K, is that a lot? Yes, to some people, yes. But compared with a lot of people, it's not especially for such a senior role, all right? So I will not be safe. I will not support this amendment and I will support the original recommendation. Thank you. Councillors, any other debate? Just a question. Just a question. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, no. So, okay, if, if this is uh, passed, what effect has it to the charter, etc.? Because you said it's not illegal, but what is it that needs to now happen uh, to do that? And the other question is, if the Lord Mayor really 
uh, feels it is too much, it also gives the opportunity that the Lord Mayor can put the money somewhere else. So I might answer the first, the last bit of the question first. Um, it is a matter reserved to the Lord Mayor to make that decision. It will be her call if she decides to forfeit um, any fees associated or remuneration associated with that. And that's a question that her council can ask of her uh, when she's back. So that's just with regards to that part of the question. And with the other part, I'll reference part of it to the CEO, but the first reference is the significant change in this charter here as well, councillors, is that role was initially always chaired by the Lord Mayor, where at the moment it references a Lord Mayor or a chair. So that remuneration is attached to a chair, not just also to the Lord Mayor. So be mindful that previous applicants on the previous charters had to be chaired by a Lord Mayor, where this time it's not necessary under the new charter. So if the new charter is chaired, if the new appla, or sorry, if the appla is chaired under the new charter by someone else, that chair, whoever that chair is, will get a remuneration, which wasn't allowed for in the previous charter. But I'll refer to the CEO first um, to answer the remainder of that question. The three electing Lord Mayor. Um, first of all, in response to the, the question, uh, council has the ability to determine remuneration outside of the charter, that's for sure. It's a, not a requirement, it's a, it's a provision within the charter. Now, secondly of all, I might be able to quote from you the section of the charter that deals with um, the, um, the Lord Mayor. So it says here, section 4.4.1, the presiding member of the board shall be the Lord Mayor, um, or where the Lord Mayor chooses not to be the member of the authority, another board member nominated by the council. So just to be really clear on that, that's that's in the revised charter. I've just called it up then. So. Councillor Martin, a question? Uh, yes, I'm trying to understand the significance of your uh, intervention acting Lord Mayor. So what you're saying is that the Lord Mayor can decide, and the CEO confirms this, can decide to not be chair, that's correct. and it can be somebody else. But that somebody else will still be paid no matter what happens. As a chair, that's correct. That's correct. So, but that's a significant change in the charter that wasn't there before. The member, the Lord yes, Mayor, the, the Lord context, Mayor had to be a member of APLA before, where now the Lord Mayor doesn't have to be. No, I, under, I understand that. But the, the significance is, is it not that the Lord Mayor, chair or not, would not be paid under this amendment? That's correct. And yep. the chair. Yep. Will still be paid. Regardless of this amendment, Correct. will still be paid. Correct. So this Correct. isolates the Lord Mayor only from remuneration. Correct. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Any further debate on this item, on this amendment, councillors? If not, I'll put it back to Councillor Donovan to sum up. Summed up, I'll put that to the vote. All of those in favour of the amendment by Councillor Donovan, all those against, that amendment is lost. Division. A division has been called. Councillors, division has been called as the on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin, and Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Councillors. This, uh, this puts the original motion back on the table uh, for a mover and a seconder. If I can have a mover and a seconder of the original initial recommendation of the committee. Original motion. Yeah. That's right. I think we have. A Sorry, we do have the, so this takes us back to the initial recommendation of the committee. If I can have a mover and a seconder of that recommendation. Sorry, Councillor Kuros was original, that's correct. Councillor O seconded. Any further debate? Okay, I'll uh, put that back to you, Councillor, to sum up. Summed up. Summed up. All right, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour of the initial recommendation? All those against? That is also carried. Thank you, councillors. We can call on to Councillor Hyde and Councillor Moran to enter the room. And we'll move on to recommendation to Councillor Kuros. Councillor, can you stand and use the mic, please? I have an amendment to just, uh, can, just until the councillors come back into the room. Welcome back, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Kuros, the uh, floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at uh, amending that, that item. I've sent it through. Thank you. So, Thank you. is that, uh, can you double check for us, please, if the amendment uh, that you are moving is currently on the screen? Yes, would you like me to read that out? Or? Um, if you choose to, but is that the correct amendment that you've sent? Yes, it is. 
Can I have a seconder for that amendment, please? Uh, sorry, I'll turn a motion. Councillor um, Abraham Zeta. As a seconder, Councillor Kuros, go ahead. I'm seeking to amend the uh, recommendation in relation to the activation and the associated parking on the um, ADA O'Connell Street site. Um, activation and increased foot traffic um, onto O'Connell Street are vital to the economic uh, prosperity of the street. The EOI process, if successful, will provide a much needed boost to the area. I know we've um, changed parking conditions on the street, which will support the visitation and uh, assist the traders. But I believe we can do more by requesting through the Minister of Planning um, minister, um, a ministerial DPA for um, parking on that site. Um, this is if we're unable to secure a suitable activation through the EI process. So this is the uh, temporary <coughs> activation. Um, I believe if supported by the council, uh, this would assist in providing a holistic parking a solution for the, for the site should the EOI process be unsuccessful. Uh, in effect, um, it would provide short-term parking to support visitors, shoppers, diners and the traders um, to O'Connell Street. Uh, this request um, may not be required if the EOI process is successful. Um, but it gives a delegation to the CEO uh, to write to the minister and provide an alternative option subject to the outcome of the EOI. Um, my recommendation seeks to address those issues and I recommend the amendment as presented for your consideration. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. Councillor Abraham Zeta as a seconder. You wish to reserve your right. Councillors, Councillor Martin. Oh, look, Lord Mayor, I can see the intention here with this motion, but it's pretty muddle-headed. <laughs> The original motion proposes that there be an EIO process for the ongoing activation with ancillary car park. Now that means that, uh, and I'm assuming people do know what it means, but uh, for the sake of, uh, of others, that means that whatever the expression of interest that's approved, the parking is related to that use. So if there's a fruit and veg market there, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then people will be allowed to park there during the market parking hours. The third part of that motion allows for an open car park to be there at all times. Now, that's a worthy uh, consideration, but it seems that what we're doing here is providing for the possibility of restricted parking related to a particular ancillary use, but if that doesn't work, then we're going to open it up so that everybody can park there muddle-headed. It is muddle-headed. It doesn't really provide the satisfaction to traders who, and, and one of them wrote to me today to say, all we want is not, not the first bit, but what we want is a car park that is open at all hours. So this neither suits the proposal that the administration put forward, doesn't suit the interests of the traders. Uh, I'm, I'm just absolutely confused by this. I, I'm voting for something that the traders don't want, something that a exclusive trader like a market or a 24 hour supermarket or whatever might want for, for two or three years. Um, and, and indeed, I'm not even certain about that. How long are we talking about? May I ask the question, Deputy Lord, but you said 2022, we might be able to build something there. That That's uh, at the end of the council term, is that correct? I've made an assumption, Councillor, based on some of my experience around development. Is, is that what the administration is? 2022, 2023? Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, the indication when previously presented to Council is uh, late 2021, early 2022. That involves the process of finance and also going through SCAP. And so how long will this expression of interest process take? The typically expression of interest process takes 21 days uh, to go through for an expression of interest and then naturally we will be presenting the outcomes of that back to council for a decision and for determination. Well, uh, look, Acting Lord Mayor, I, I wonder if the mover would accept a variation deleting the first and second parts and just proceeding with the third part, which is what we know traders want. Um, so, from, Councillor, I'll, I'll take that um, on board. Uh, Councillor, are you prepared to accept the deletion of item one and two of your motion? Can I ask a clear yes and no answer? No. You've got your answer, Councillor. Can I ask a question? No, not yet. Councillor Martin still has the floor. Oh, 
uh, well, in that case, Lord Mayor, uh, acting Lord. Lord Mayor, yes, I'm sorry, uh, I keep elevating you. Um, um, could we just uh, propose an amendment that is deleting one and two, replacing it uh, with three as the sole motion? And, and I seek a seconder. Uh, Councillor Moran, as the seconder of that item. Councillor, thank you. Well, uh, yes, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, look, I, I have said uh, what is obvious, that is the traders are seeking this, and, and I just invite the team to support this. I think this is uh, the kind of thing uh, for which the traders um, will be extraordinarily grateful. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran. Thank you. No, councillors, just before oh, my check with councillors. Councillors, anyone else would like to speak to this item? Before, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask the CEO to respond in a second. Yeah. So, CEO, go ahead. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, just a point of clarification with Councillor Martin's comments that should this go through as proposed, that there would be an open car park. The process would actually be the DPA would need to be accepted by the Minister. The DPA would then, would then allow Council to lodge its own development application. The development application would determine at Council's discretion the model or the mo mode of parking that it wants to put forward. So that would be entirely at the Council's discretion as to the style of parking. Um, I just want to make that quite clear. So just the DPA itself doesn't enable the development to occur. There is a process that you would need to be involved in and control should you wish to progress with a car park. Councillor Martin, I see, I see your hand, but Councillor Moran put her hand up first for a question. Do you have a question, Councillor? Uh, yeah, just a question. You want to speak? Yeah. Okay, so I might get Councillor Moran to speak first. If you sure. Yep. Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, yes, look, I, I think that um, this, uh, we should see whether this can work. Uh, I think it's very little point going through the EOI process if we're then wanting to um, ask for a DPA. So I think this is a clear emotion. Um, the traders certainly want this. Um, it is against our policies, um, but we're, we're asking for a DPA. So um, I think that's the correct way to go. That's nothing ensures that it does. Um, talking about my motion later on, um, that doesn't preclude that um, because this is basically an open public car park on the La Cornu site. Um, the traders also should have a designated area for their workers because I assume we'll charge for this. Um, so that doesn't really help the traders go out. So I urge you to vote for this and also vote for the subsequent motion so that the traders' customers will get a park, but also the traders will get a park. Because as you know, we've locked, because of the event stress on our streets um, in North Adelaide, we have locked down our parking very strictly out of necessity. And the traders are caught between a rock and a hard place. So I recommend this. I think the traders will, um, will like this. I was prepared to wait till the EOI process and then if that failed, move this now, but um, we might as well cut to the chase and uh, do it straight away and not muck around. Uh, so I urge you to vote for this amendment. Um, it is what the traders want. It is what the um, people in North Adelaide seem to want. But I also remind you that this does not, this is not an either or with the motion coming up. This would preclude any, if this got up, then we would still have to find traders car parking. So I think they marry together very well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, you had a question to ask? Yeah, just a question of the CEO. This um, uh, part of the motion that was proposed by uh, Councillor Gouras would lead to a process that took how long? From a development assessment point of view? Um, look, it, does, it would depend largely on how quickly the Minister would provide the DPA. Hard to tell. We would need to go through a process of writing to the Minister and seeking his response. That can be quite a swift process compared to other DPA processes because it's, a, it's called a ministerial DPA, so within the control of the minister. And because it's a ministerial DPA, it would have immediate effect. So, thank you, Councillor. Councillor uh, Kuros, did you have a question? Yes, can I speak? Can I speak? Uh, no, you're summing. Uh, sorry, you're. Uh, sorry, I apologise. You can speak to this. This is a yes, you can. I just wanted to 
just want to make this very clear um, that when we go through the EOI process and we open up the car park with the um, activation on the site there, that car park, we have that choice to open up that car park for everybody, not just for the activation, correct? Is that, are we being clear on that? Because I think Councillor Martin is confused. I think he thinks that the activation that will go through on that site will only, the car park will only be for that activation on that site. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. We'll ask, let's see, three. Shanti, could you respond to that, thanks? Um, through the Acting Lord Mayor, um, the activation process would, uh, alongside it, create a car park and that car park would be an ancillary car park in association with the activation. The question of how one polices who is parking there would become a little bit more problematic. So technically, um, there might be an issue around managing who parks there. Right, so, but in creating, well, I do not support this, um, ver this variation because the, EO, if you, the email that was sent through that uh, Councillor Martin is referring to is also saying that the, uh, the trader supports the temporary activation because the most important thing that the traders want speaking to them is that they do want an activation on that site and that will open up the um, business onto O'Connell Street. Um, they uh, and if we do not um, allow this to happen, um, if we do not allow the EOI to go ahead, it will um, it could cause some damage to to the, um, allowing some activation on O'Connell Street. Um, so it's really important that we support the EOI first. It's really important that we have the, the car park activated um, as an auxiliary, and then we go further. Then, if that is not successful, then we'll go ahead and uh, get it open under the um, ministerial um, DPA. So, I don't agree with this um, amendment at all. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. Um, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, I can't support this amendment. Um, it's it's a strange turn of events to see councillors coming into this chamber to argue for less activation in their own precincts. Um, in fact, I think it's quite absurd. But but the height of the absurdity is that not only are we, are, are we arguing, or is it being argued that we have less activation, but it's also being suggested that we just want a car park there. Let's you know pave paradise and put up a parking lot. It's all well and good to have extra space um, in North Adelaide for customers to come in. Um, but what is going to draw them in? I mean, go down, look at the precincts, look at the shops there. It's similar to my precinct in Hutt Street. There are so many empty shops there. It's all well and good for us to have all that space to, to have people parking on it, but what is actually going to be drawing them in? This activation, um, the activation uh, that, that I hope will get up with, with the original recommendation, um, uh, that is an opportunity to bring more customers into the precinct, something new and interesting for people to look at. That is going to be complementary to the businesses which are already there. So um, uh, I can't support this amendment. Uh, I commend Councillor Kouros on, on uh, the amendment she, or the variation that she moved. Um, and I think we can actually have our cake and eat it here. We can have the parking that we, that we need um, in our precinct down there. Um, but we can also have the activation, which is going to uh, enliven the use of the car park uh, and benefit the businesses that are, that are already there and, and other businesses that might actually like to set up on the site temporarily and then potentially find a home in the city permanently. That's, that's what this is about. It's about increasing uh, the foot traffic um, and the patronage of North Adelaide. And that's why I commend Councillor Cross um, and uh, I can't support this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Councillors, Councillor Kerr. Just briefly, thanks. I'm, I'm simply going to comment in relation to Councillor Hyde's uh, remarks that, um, that uh, parking in North Adelaide uh, is an issue in and of itself. Uh, and in fact, it has been the lack of parking which has plagued uh, O'Connell Street for years uh, and has led to a situation where people do not uh, patronise the existing. Uh, there's plenty of entertainment and hospitality on offer. There's a cinema, there's all these restaurants. The problem has always been you go down there, especially at night, you can't get a park. Uh, understandably, because there's so much uh, there's so much um, residential parking there and it is, it is a very delicate balancing act. But the idea that you must activate 
uh, in order to justify a car park. I, I think that's misguided. I think parking uh, is desperately needed and we've got an enormous parcel of land that is lying absolutely fallow. Um, I, put two and two together, I commend the motion by Councillor Kuros. You confused me there, Councillor yeah. Kerr. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's it. I'll, I'll let that stand. I, no, think no, no, we, no. I think we can infer what I meant by that. Thank you, Councillor. Um, <laughs> Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Um, just a question to the administration. Sure. Given the nature of the ancillary parking, is there any way that we can um, frame the EOI in such a way that we ensure that the ancillary parking, though ancillary, will still meet the needs that are being described? Question one. If no, question two, can these processes take place simultaneously, given this is an enormous parcel of land and it would be a shame to turn it into the whole thing into a car park, in my opinion. Is there a way, first of all, of making the ancillary fit the job? If not, can we do both things at the same time? Shanti, thanks. Uh, through the Acting Lord Mayor, uh, in answer to uh, Councillor Donovan's first question, uh, a development application process would be necessary to facilitate the activation of that site, much like uh, the previous activation on that site. Um, and that development application that we dealt with previously um, had car parking in association with the activation of the site. Um, so in simple terms, the answer to the question is yes, we can make the two work together. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Councillors, any other discussion? If not, I'll go back to summing up. Uh, Councillor. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, I just want to clarify um, with you, Shanti. Um, although you said that it's hard to police, the car park that is recommended for the activation is an ancillary car park. It is not a paid at grade U park car park. And really, the inability to police it is irrelevant. It is ancillary and only. Councillor, what's the question? Used is this correct? If it's only to be used if there is an activation event on the, and not to be used if there's no activation event. Is that correct? Through the Acting Lord Mayor, that is correct. My understanding of the EOI, however, is to try and promote as much activation as is possible, and I'll defer that question to Tom. Yes, but, but to, to simplify it, that car park can only be used when there's an activation on the site. Is that correct? And not used when there's no activation on the site? Through the Acting Lord Mayor, that is correct. Thank you. Tom, did you want to elaborate on that? Um, just, no, just. I'm happy with that. Um, Sorry. Councillors, Councillor Knoll. Um, if we go back to the beginning of our, our time here in council and, and uh, uh, Councillor Kouros's uh, efforts to try and get an activation into uh, you know, uh, North Adelaide so that we are able to uh, you know, revitalise that space. And I think you know, here we are, we're talking now about a car park. Now, I can appreciate that and, uh, and all these things are always uh, an issue. But my first point is, is that uh, we're having a, a problem with people coming to the precinct um, and using it. Um, and it may be during their peak times, just like in the central market, uh, the car park is full on, a, on twice, twice a, a week, but the rest of the time it, it has ample space for anybody. So the issue is first uh, to re rejig the way the, the economy sits in, in that precinct. Uh, first of all, let us not uh, exclude ideas. And let's, let's ask first what people are going to bring to this place and see what it is that, that they can deliver. So when you've done that, then you look at plan B. And if a vacant lot is a plan B after we've decided that, no, there isn't anything that we can really see that, that grabs the imagination, then obviously go down that path. But let's first of all, let's not start to muddy the word for someone who may be interested in, in doing something in North Adelaide, heaven forbid. Uh, and then, you know, uh, uh, you know, discourage that activity by doing something else. Um, and, you know, uh, we have still car parks there, there's still car parks underneath the, the North Adelaide uh, Shopping Centre. You know what I mean? There are still places there that are being paid for. So, you know what I mean? Let's look at that because most many people drive around and check it something for nothing. And, and that's, not a, that's not a reason to come to that precinct. So let's activate it uh, and let's see about bringing people here and let's worry about the other problems afterwards. 
Thank you, councillors. Councillors, any other remarks or comments? <coughs> Councillor Martin Summer. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, look, Councillor Moran is absolutely right. You can support this and support her motion in the later part of the meeting, and that's exactly what I'll do. And I thank her for supporting this motion. Um, I, I must say, Acting Lord Mayor, this is what happens when you follow a script. What we learned tonight is that if there is an EIO process that leads to activation with ancillary parking, it can only be used when there's an ancillary event on to the parking. So, you know, if there's a market on Mondays and Tuesdays, that's when the car park can be used. It's not a very satisfactory outcome. In fact, it's the reverse of what all of the traders want. Let me read to you. This is what one of the most significant traders, one of the most successful and the most influential on O'Connell Street said to us, all the traders are given, all they ask is the opportunity to benefit from customers having a convenient, close and open parking facility. No mention of activation here. If parking, well, the EOI process for temporary activation. I would like to the EOI Councillor Well, look, members, there's the first line. Here is the email. Let me read it. And I hope that discount for the, uh, the interjection will be allowed. Traders are given the opportunity to benefit from the customers having a convenient, close and open parking facility. If parking is for staff and traders only, the car park will be half empty. Customers will complain terribly. Traders will cop the brunt of frustration and the council will be in yet another embarrassing position to hopelessly defend. Please listen to us business people. We know what our customers want. We hear it every day. Do not ruin this opportunity and glimmer of hope for us all. So, look, councillors, councillor Kuras, the traders know what they want. One trader. We're trying. Well, look, this is the most influential trader on the, the street. You know him. You know him well. He talks to you often. He Who was it? I'd love to know. know. <laughs> he, Go ahead, councillor. He loves you. He loves you. That's. This I wish, is, I wish this, you shared that feeling, councillor. This is really important. I wish, oh, we should hug it out. This, this is really important to the traders of O'Connell Street. And the only way we can get them what they want is by addressing that part of the motion. Let's begin the investigation. Get the authority. Bring it back to council. Allow us to decide how that parking will operate, who will be entitled in accordance with this and what other activation we want to put there. If you go with anything less than this, you're going to give the traders exactly what they don't want. You will be unpopular on O'Connell Street. I just urge you to support this. Councillor Martin, thank you. With that, I put Councillor Martin's amendment uh, to the vote. All those in favour of that amendment, all those against, that amendment is lost. We division. go back to division. Councillors, the division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin. Thank you, councillors. Um, back to the initial, um, the original, um, I think it was a, not a variation uh, of that recommendation by Councillor Kuros, which is being brought back on the screen. Um, councillors, any further debate on this item? <coughs> Councillor Sims. The question, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, what does this mean for uh, Councillor Moran's motion that she has on the agenda for today. I'm just conscious of not wanting to cut across a motion that's been put on sure. notice. I'll uh, ask that question of the CEO. Look, from what I can see, Councillor, through you, Acting Lord Mayor, from what I can see, it doesn't contradict um, the two. They're not. They're not exclusive of each other and can well be worked together because they are different proposals. That's as I see it. So to provide clarity for you, both motions, this item and also the motion will still be considered by this council. Um, Councillors, Councillor Abraham Zedek. Uh, just very quickly, Acting Lord Mayor, um, can I just say that uh, uh, Councillor Kouros has really championed the activation of uh, Adia de uh, Street. She's really been an, um, an effective voice, uh, I believe. And, 
Um, we, we did hear uh, uh, a fair bit of discussion around activation and, and uh, the car parking uh, going hand in hand with that activation. And I think uh, the point that uh, uh, we need to be mindful of is that the more we activate the sites, the more people we attract to the site, and the longer the car park can run. So uh, I urge all members to keep that in mind when voting for this amendment. Uh, this amendment, uh, this amendment, yes. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, you've spoken. Uh, no, you've spoken, and then you ended with your amendment. So, I was preempting the amendment. I have spoken. You've already spoken, sir. I apologise, Councillor. Um, councillors, any further discussion or debate on this item? Look, I may quickly um, make a quick remark uh, from the chair with regards to this item. Um, as I see it, there are two decisions of this council that were formulated and brought in by Councillor Kuros in December. Uh, one was to look at expression or look at activation ideas that this council endorsed. Uh, and also looking at opportunities around the car parking. Uh, I do look at this motion which provides for, I, I still think we, we've done this a bit too late. I was hoping that this all will be done in December and January, but um, I still believe that this will still trigger an EOI process that will go to market if that EOI process is successful. Um, and I might ask a question quickly through the CEO here, uh, because what I believe the EOI process would be CEO is that a full-time or a permanent style activation for the area. We're not looking at just one or two days a week, correct? That is correct, but I might get Tom just to clarify it for you. So you that's what I was have absolute, asking for Tom to clarify it. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, the intention of the UI process is to activate it through the fullest extent of the week. So if we can achieve seven days, that's what we're aiming to do. The reasons being is that gives more security to the parking as well. So they do come hand in hand. We're also looking at the hours of operation so that it can be extended to its maximum. So we'll be working with any respondents in regards to the EUI process. Thank you for that. That's the what I wanted to clarify um, in the way of a remark. Um, and with that, I'll put it back to Councillor Kuros to sum up. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, I'm actually very, very surprised that Councillor Moran and Councillor Martin do not support the EOI process. Um, you know, we, we've been fighting for activation in um, North Adelaide. We've been fighting for the businesses. We want our main streets to be activated, and this is an excellent way to do this. I have spoken to the businesses extensively, and the email that um, Councillor Martin has quoted failed to quote that uh, the uh, from the trader, the the prominent trader on uh, uh, O'Connell Street, that he supports the EOI process. I have spoken to. Our, I have spoken to all of the businesses um, on the street extensively whilst I was campaigning and as an elected member and they all want to see activation on that site and if you want I can even cite their business names, the ones that really want to, to see that happen. Um, I spoke to them um, all this week. Uh, during the week, um, we've got Chocolate Tree, you've got the Pink Pig, you've got the Oxford, you've got the Cheapo, you've got O'Connell Street, and the list is endless. I can keep going. They want to see business down O'Connell Street. They do not want it to be a dormant car park for traders and for their staff. They want it to be, they want life down this street, and it's it's just been too long. They've been waiting for so long for something to happen there. It's been 30 years in the past without, with, with it being under an someone else's uh, ownership. Now that the council has got ownership of this land, it's the greatest opportunity to activate that site now before we develop, well, as a temporary activation in the process until we develop it. It is the intention to want to have a permanent development there for sure. But however, in the meantime, all the businesses, all the traders that I speak to personally and extensively and almost weekly, this is what they want. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. With that, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Kuros' um, motion? All those against? Division. Division has been called. Councillors, division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abrahimzade, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Martin, Councillor Canal, and Councillor Sims. Thank you, councillors. Um, we are one hour and seven minutes in, and we are moving on to 
The second item um, of recommendations, advice from the Reconciliation Committee of Recommendation 1. If I could have someone please move. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Seconded by Councillor Canole. Any discussion with regards to this item? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That item is carried. We move on to item 7.3, recommendation of the Audit Committee meeting on the 3rd of the 5th, 2019. Also moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Moran. Again, any debate or discussion on this item? Be it that there's none, I'll also put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That item is also carried. Um, we are dealing now with recommendation two of the audit committee terms of reference. Uh, if I can have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Seconded by Councillor Sims. Any discussion? Be it that there's none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against, that item is also carried. Item 8, reports for Council Chief, Chief Executive Officer, there is the nil. Uh, questions on notice, we have two questions on notice uh, from Councillor Martin. Question 9.1, Councillor Martin, question on notice, the Aquatic Centre. Uh, Councillor Martin, would you like your question read and your answer read, or are you happy to take it as read? Uh, no, look, I'm happy to read the question, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, if you like. From Aquatic Centre Records, could the administration provide the number of user groups and, if possible, details for each of the following categories who helped make up the three quarters of a million unique visits to the facility last financial year? One, school groups, two, community swimming clubs, three, swimming and diving groups for the disabled, children's learn to swim classes, four, five, adult learn to swim classes, six, seniors groups, seven, other groups. Thank you, Councillor. Are you happy to take the answer reply as read, or would you like to be read publicly? Oh, I, I think for the purposes of the people who are in the gallery and the media, it would be a good thing if you read it. Okay. Acting Lord Minister. I will ask the uh, CEO to respond administratively to that comment, uh, to that question. Thank you, CEO. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, in response to the question, the following outlines a number of user groups within each category from the last financial year. Firstly, school groups is 49, which includes government and private schools. Community swimming clubs is three. <coughs> swimming and diving groups for the disabled is one. Children's Learn to Swim classes is 2,426, which comprises enrolled students attending weekly. Next is Adult Learn to Swim classes, 74, which are enrolled students attending weekly. Seniors groups is six. Other groups is 16, which includes water polo clubs and competitions, underwater hockey, triathlon, scuba diving performers, and training providers. Thank you, um, CEO. We move on to item 9.2. Uh, uh, Councillor Martin, question on notice. The in daily article. Uh, again, uh, Councillor, would you like to read your question? And I'll ask the CEO to respond. Oh, well, I'm uh, okay to read that. Um, uh, one on April 15th, 2019, in daily published an article in which the acting Lord Mayor said he had in 2018 met a potential candidate who in turn has identified that meeting place as being on council property. Both agreed this discussion had been about the operations of and conditions of joining Team Adelaide, which was contesting the City of Adelaide elections. Following this publication, can the CEO detail any investigation, sorry, I've lost my place, any investigation uh, he may have undertaken to determine whether this use of council resources contravenes section 62, section 78.3 or section 91A of the Local Government Act. Two, if the CEO has not undertaken such an investigation, could he advise to whom he's referred the matter for investigation or advise why he does not believe it is his responsibility to do so. Three, the in daily article referred to above also contained a statement by the acting Lord Mayor that a group of 21 candidates, which formed Team Adelaide, had met at an undisclosed location on about, um, sorry, I can't see it, 10 occasions in 2018, up to and including the month when the legislated caretaker period began to agree on motions that would be brought to council. Uh, could the CEO advise whether he has investigated any of these uh, so-called high-level and advanced motions shown to Indaley 
uh, and whether they should have been brought to the previous or the current council's uh, attention. No, I beg your pardon, it says, and whether any aspect of the formulation or presentation of such motions would be in breach of the Local Government Act. And four, if the CEO has undertaken such an investigation, could he advise to whom he has referred the matter for investigation or advise why he does not believe it's his responsibility to do so? Thank you, Councillor. I'll ask the CEO to respond. Through you, uh, Acting Lord Mayor. Firstly, as previously advised when the Councillor asked a similar question in the past, I'm not aware of any misuse of Council resources as suggested in the question. Secondly, I would not, as a matter of course, investigate assertions made in the media. Thirdly, I'm not privy to conversations between candidates. However, discussion of ideas for Council would not be in breach of legislation. I imagine many candidates spoke about motions they would bring to Council should they be elected. Fourthly, it's not considered to be in the public interest to allocate resources to investigate allegations of this nature. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. You're Thank satisfied you. with the answer, Councillor Martin? Thank you. I love that you've got a little crush on me. It's cute. Um, we'll move on to questions without notice. Uh, item 10, do we have any questions without notice? Nope. Okay, move on to motions on notice. 11.1, Councillor Sims, motion on notice. Council member contact with developers. Councillor, um, present your motion and I'll ask for a seconder for you. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. I move that Council supports the regular disclosure of Council member contact with developers on an online register to improve transparency and community trust in decision making and request that administration provide a report on how this might occur, considering in particular the City of Vincent's policy on Council member contact with developers. Thank you, Councillor. I'll seek a seconder. Um, Councillor Donovan, put a hand up first there, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Go ahead. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. This is an important motion for our Council. It provides an opportunity for us to begin a new era of transparency and accountability here in Town Hall. We know that faith in our democratic institutions is at an all-time low. Indeed, the Museum of Australian Democracy and Institute for Governance and Policy Analysis at the University of Canberra have been working together to track faith in our democracy in Australia over the last decade. In 2007, they found that 86% of voters were satisfied with Australia's democracy. But that figure dropped to just 41% last year. That is a worrying statistic for us all. And we must, as elected representatives, do what we can to restore the community's trust. One of the things that I know from my discussions with people in the community is that there is growing concern about the influence of vested interests in our political system. There is a perception that for too long, our political system has served the interests of the big end of town at the expense of the community. And this has to change. I believe that improving transparency and accountability across all levels of government helps us rebuild trust in our democratic institutions. It's only right that Adelaide City Council, the first level of elected government in our country, should be the council that champions best practice when it comes to democracy. The City of Vincent over in Western Australia have a policy in place that has won acclaim in terms of its promotion of accountability in that city. Under that policy, council members are required to disclose any contact that they have with the developer within 10 days. And the form of contact is prescribed under the policy. And I know there may be some discussion about exemptions uh, tonight, but I'd encourage members not to get caught up in the weeds there. If this motion is supported tonight, the administration can come back with um, some suggestions in that regard, and they can be worked through when we draft the policy. I think a policy like this would really help to rebuild faith in our democracy here in Adelaide. Now, I should point out, there is nothing shameful about meeting developers. I'm not trying to demonise anybody here. Indeed, as city councillors, we do have a responsibility to meet with a range of stakeholders in our city. That's expected. However, developers occupy a unique, a unique position in that they have a vested interest, a vested financial interest in the decisions that council makes and they will often seek to advance those when meeting with elected members. And so for that reason, contact with them should be disclosed in the public interest. The community has a right to know who their elected representatives are meeting with and why. 
we should let the sunlight in, Acting Deputy Lord Mayor, because we know that sunlight is the best disinfectant. This reform would really end once and for all any perception of bias and it would strengthen community confidence in the decisions that we make. This reform would end the culture of secrecy and backroom meetings in Town Hall. I ask for an extension. The Thank you. This would end the uh, culture of secrecy and backroom meetings in town hall. It would put all of these interactions in the public record, on the public record, and we, acting deputy, uh, acting Lord Mayor, deputy Lord Mayor, have no reason to be afraid of uh, increased transparency. We have nothing to fear. Now, I know that some people may call this a stunt or grandstanding, as they tend to do when I put forward sensible ideas that have broad support in the community. But this isn't that. It's an important reform. It's an important reform that would enhance democracy in our city. The sky won't fall in if we do this. If anything, the sun will shine a little bit brighter and that would be a great thing because we know that sunlight is the best disinfectant. Let's open the drapes, let's let the sun in and let's actually respect the community's right to know because after all, we are here to serve their interests. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, Councillor Donovan to speak as a seconder, and I'm followed by Councillor Bramzetta and Councillor Hyde. Acting Lord Mayor, I think this is a pretty sensible, straightforward motion. We just had a session immediately prior to Council that discussed probity and conflicts of interest, at which it was emphasised to us uh, that over disclosure is preferential. Um, this is a very straightforward process that we would be going through were we to go through this disclosure of meeting with any developers. And essentially the reason why it's required is because although at present there are um, requirements in place for us to speak to conflicts of interest, this actually adds another layer whereby it's a check that ensures are we to be discussing things that might benefit others um, it may not be a conflict directly to us because it may not actually uh, give us the benefit. But if we are to be having conversations with developers, as, as we were just um, briefed immediately prior to this uh, meeting, we could inadvertently be providing information that advantage developers. And so it provides another little check and balance. It gives reassurance to the community because it shapes a perception that we are actually mindful of those conversations. We recognise that it's important and it's so simple to do that I certainly will be supporting this motion. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. I have Councillor Abraham Zeta, followed by Councillor Hyde and then Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, coming up to federal elections, uh, We've all seen all the uh, all the different political uh, uh, campaigns, all the ads, and uh, it sort of felt like uh, Richard Di Natale was sitting across from me, but with the words uh, like Love "big end of town." Thank you. <laughs> Big end of town. You know, Acting Lord Mayor, we do have the OP, the Office of Public Integrity. We do have the Office of the Ombudsman, and we do have ICAC to keep an eye on these things if they are needed. But uh, I went around to uh, to look at. To look at the legislation, look at um, see what the checks and balances that we do have in place, and I do have quite a few, so I, I hope I'm not going to need all the time uh, tonight, but uh, I'm going to try my best to get through them. First and foremost, this chamber does not make any planning decisions. This chamber does delegate authority for a representative to go on uh, council assessment panels. Now, council assessment panels, we do have a, uh, a separate piece of policy here. Um, under Schedule 3 of the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act, uh, CAF are to, uh, well, there's, a, there's a, a, a range of uh, checks and balances here. There is a, there's a bit that talks to code of conduct requirements. There's a bit that talks to uh, uh, acting in the public interest, uh, regard for honesty. There's a bit that talks to conflict of interest. There's a bit that talks to making decisions and taking action. There's a bit that uh, talks to public comment. There's also a bit that talks about protection and use of information, and it keeps going. These are the, uh, the amounts of checks and balances that we do have in place. Uh, we've got another bit that talks to uh, uh, proper exercise of power. We also have a section in there for gifts and benefits. And if that's not enough, we've got uh, one paragraph there on bias. Now that's only for CAP members. So if the argument is the influence that, uh, that, the, that the developers uh, would have, then uh, I think the Local Government Act uh, in particular, part four, 
um, would uh, would have the right uh, checks and balances of there. So we've got nine pages from six, section 62 all the way through to uh, section 65, nine whole pages of what to do and what not to do. Now, if the argument is about the donations, we've got the Local Government Elections Act. Now, in this act, we've got six pages, part 14, which talks to campaign donations, section 80 right through to section 90. And now, if that's not enough for uh, Councillor Sims, we've got a register of interest, which is actually uh, under legislation we need. Under section 70 of the Local Government Act, we need that. But even if that's not enough, refer to our standing orders. Let's go to our standing orders. Part three talks to code of conduct and part five talks to conflict of interest. Now, um, there was talk of uh, over disclosure, but then again, I, I require another minute or so. I require a show of hands for an extension. Thank you, Councillor. Thank, 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 Thank you, members. Um, there was talk of uh, over disclosure. So then where do we stop? Do we can we continue to talk to engineers that are affiliated with developers? Can we talk to lawyers who are affiliated with developers? Can we talk to architectural firms? Can we talk to marketing firms? Can we talk to hospitality businesses that, uh, that host some of these uh, developers in their, uh, um, uh, in their facilities? So really, I think Councillor Sims uh, did say it well. This is, uh, this is about political grandstanding. It's not about uh, transparency because we've got all the transparency that, uh, uh, that I just mentioned. Uh, there, there is so much in our legislation and our own policies and procedures here in Council. We cannot get away with doing something dirty. And this brings me back to developers. D for developers, D for dirty. D for disingenuous, D for devious, D for demonized. I think that was the word that you used. D for desperate. I am desperate for some more time, possibly. But uh, the, really, Councilors. go ahead, Councillor. Developers are ratepayers. Developers are businesses. Some of the mum and dad developers that I know are small businesses, and as we know, small businesses are the backbone of the state and the local economy. But the most important part I'd like to make is that developers create communities. Communities that Councillor Sims, you and I live in. These developers have been involved in Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, <laughs> Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Moran, please give him time to speak. These developers these developers. You've still got 14 seconds. If you don't interject, I'll keep extending. Thank you. Go Thank ahead, you, Council. Lord Mayor. Thank you. I'd like to get the same respect that I gave uh, some of these members. Yes. These developers invest in this city. Let's not shatter the business and the investment confidence that we've created here. Thank you, Councillor Abrams. Councillor Aaron, I've seen your hand. I've got you on, uh, on file. Uh, Councillor Hyde, and then Councillor Ho, and then Councillor Moran, and then Councillor Kuros. Right. Point of order. Go ahead, Councillor. I've just been called to pick a vote, Councillor Moran. Steve. Councillor Moran. I didn't no, I, I, I won't stand for this. Please, please it's not. Councillors. You give me no Councillor Moran. Councillor, Councillors, please. I, I, I remind you, Councillors, we are all here representing ratepayers. We must be respectful to one another. Councillor Moran, Councillor Branzetta, please. Hug it out if you need to. I don't think so. <laughs> Wishful thinking. It may work. Councillor Hyde. Sorry, Councillor Abramsetta. If we can just behave a little bit. Um, thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, well, another day, another motion that's going to achieve absolutely nothing. Um, we want to talk about world's best practice, well, even country best practice. Well, administration comments suggest that we actually already do best practice, unlike some other states, South Australian councils operate under a council assessment panel. That sounds like best practice of me. The decision making is completely and utterly removed from this chamber. Um, as Councillor Abraham today outlined, CAP has its own very intense regime governing what you can and can't do. Um, we have our own intense regime, which again, administration has said uh, it is an appropriate governance control. So um, 
Councillor Sims asked me to think about this and we spoke about it briefly yesterday um, and I indicated yesterday that I was erring on not supporting it um, and Councillor Sims suggested that I go back and I think about it and I did think about it and in thinking about it I noticed that there's a particular trend um, that, that occurs when, when some members of this body bring motions and you'll see them uh, perhaps just before they appear on the agenda there's a little dip uh, dipping of the toe in the media, it sort of pops up there and, and there's a little grab and a little headline and a little bit of credit that gets thrown around um, and then uh, then that plays out for a little while and then it comes to the chamber. This happens time and time and time again, regardless of whether the motion gets up or not. Um, so that's, that's something I noticed. But we want to talk about faith in politics and this ties in, in directly to what I've just highlighted, that trend I've just highlighted. We want to talk about restoring faith in politics. Well, you don't restore faith in politics by pitting ratepayers against ratepayers. You don't restore faith in politics by uh, taking a misconception in the community that is that this body actually influences the development that happens in the city directly or can have an adverse influence on particular developments and the communities around them. You don't increase the faith in democracy by taking that misconception, that misunderstanding um, and exploiting it for your own political gain. That actually degrades the democratic process. That, that, that degrades the purpose that we're all here. Um, and so if we want to talk about faith in democracy, what I would ask members of this chamber to do is when they're faced with problems uh, that come to them uh, about developers or this and that, or accusations that are put to them, assertions that are not backed up, that they actually cite um, the same documents that Councillor Abraham today was citing, that they talk about the intense regulatory regime that we're all governed by. And, and mind you as well, and Councillor Sims knows this too, um, I've worked in all three levels of government by far, local government, um, is the most transparent level of government we have. Now, I'm not saying that's not a reason to, just because we're the best doesn't mean we shouldn't do better, but what I am saying is that, that, is that in this instance, um, uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm on the same page as, as administration here. Everything is all in check here. Um, uh, and Councillor Hyde, do you require more time or are you something? I've, I've made my final points. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. I think Councillor Abraham Sedan and Councillor Hyde cover most of my points. Uh, I'll keep it brief, all right? I opposed this motion and I spoke to Rob already. I opposed this motion and I think Councillor Sims have made a very wrong thing. Firstly, as far as I understand, like Councillor Abraham Sedan mentioned, the City of Adelaide have never made decisions on any developments in the CBD. Second, we have conflict of interest provisions that currently cover any needs, any need to declare a conflict. Our admin have provided us enough trainings about when and how to declare conflict of interest. Indeed, we have just had another one right before we walk into this chamber today. Third, developers are also our ratepayers. Why would we put out any barriers for ratepayers to approach elected members to discuss how we could all work together and make this city a better place? Restaurant owners, re retailers, residents, members of all kinds of organizations will approach elected members and have discussions. Why would council seems divide our community into different groups and treat our ratepayers with double standards? I would like to know his political purpose behind this motion. Last but not least, where does this end? Do we have to lock conversations with lawyers and consultants who work on behalf of developers? This will never end. Furthermore, I would, I would also like to ask Councillor Sims not to treat any people with double standards. Stop making these fancy multiple statements and get a headline on the media. This is local government. Let's work on issues that really benefit our ratepayers. Let's not use it as a stepping stone for its own political ambitions. I will encourage all members to vote against it. Enough is enough. Councillor Moran and then Councillor Kuros. I had to say I'm very disappointed that uh, that sort of debate was allowed in this chamber. I'm sure the uh, Lord Mayor wouldn't have allowed that. Um, Councillor Moran, I'm acting, I'm in this position and I'm entitled I'm to make the point. I'm just saying, I'm very disappointed I don't, I don't, I don't that disagree with you, Councillor. I'm happy that you disagree with me. Um, I'm disappointed that such personal attacks 
would be made against um, a councillor who has put a completely fair, reasonable motion. If you don't agree with it, there's no reason to get personal and say grandstanding. What does grandstanding even mean? It's like saying you're a do-gooder. Um, I, I'm shocked. It's the longest time I have seen. Some people have been here for 30 seconds um, and feel that they know better. Uh, a councillor's motion should be judged on the motion, not by the persons put up or the um, or the, the motives they might have. I've known councillor Sims for a long time and find him a very decent, straightforward councillor, unlike many I've dealt with. Uh, we can always do better, Councillor Hyde, um, and we should. And this is one of the ways we can do better. There is no way that this is demonising developers or any other D words that I might refer to. Um, it is um, simply to keep a track of councillors. In my time on council, quite recently, I know Councillor Acting Lord Mayor has had a few um, shadows thrown at him, and I'm sure he would have appreciated having someone that he could have pointed to to say that it wasn't the case. This is a protection, not a, um, not a weapon. Uh, we meet developers all the time. It is wrong to say that it's only the development assessment that decides on development. For goodness sake, the three biggest developments going now are the Cornu site, 88 Connell Street, the Central Market, and indeed the Aquatic Centre. We do indeed trip over developers all the time. Uh, developers, of course, want to go and speak to councillors about the Aquatic Centre, about the market, and about the Lacornu site, it is it is beyond disingenuous to say that this council does not make decisions on development. It does. That is not political grandstanding. It is a sensible thing that most council, I think, will eventually do. There are very few checks and balances um, that actually ever come into play. Um, as we, if anybody had bothered to attend the meeting before. Um, we would have found out that it's entirely up to the individual whether he calls a conflict of interest or decides to divulge anything. Uh, I don't think that the general public would think this is grandstand or something they're not interested in. One of the biggest threats to local government and to any government is the feeling that people are going to speak to developers and co uh, getting around the process of democracy. And that happens regularly in this council. I'll give you one example. Councillor Moran, are you requesting an extension? Oh, just a 30 seconds. No, one. before you do, I need to get leave from the room. Councillors, do you wish to extend? Can I get a clear show of hands? One, two, three, four, five, six, go ahead. Uh, one of the biggest disasters that happened to this council was a, um, was the first time we tried to buy the Lacornu site. One of our councillors went to speak to the buyer and our bid was up the next day, just over what we had bidded. So it is very disingenuous. Councillor Moran, I'm gonna to have to stop you there and ask the CEO to clarify that comment on public record. Three, acting Lord Mayor, we need some clarification on that. I'm sorry I couldn't just sit here and, and call on that right now. Um, but I do remind you, Councillor, that dealings that have been undertaken in confidence need to be remain in confidence. This is a long time ago. This is an prior to, prior This to is the bid when uh, we tried to buy the Lacornu site for the first time. A councillor went to speak to the de developer, was seen there, but because there was no declaration, nothing we could do, um, that we didn't buy the Lacornu site then. Uh, that council still died, so the CEO cannot worry too much about defamation. Um, so we come into contact, and when you're a little bit older and you've been on council a little bit longer, and you do respect the system, which you don't appear to now, um, then um, I think you'll see the great need for this. But I think the lowest point in this council has been the personal abuse. This is not a contentious motion. Just vote against it if you don't like it. You don't have to get in there and tear strips off your colleagues. It's disrespectful, and I have not seen anything like it, even with a very factionalised council like this before. And you should be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. Sales. Councillor Kuros. I'm very disappointed with um, the senior member of the council's um, uh, attitude on, on this um, debate. So can I have this motion to be put? Uh, no. If I can get a seconder for that motion. Uh, that's a gag. Can I get it? 
Councillor, I have a motion before me to have this put. Do I have a seconder for this motion? Councillor Ho, you have you are seconding this motion. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims, Councillor Sims, I have a really motion before me, Councillor. It's a really bad it's a law. Gag. Councillors, I have a motion before me. I need to deal. Councillors, I have a motion before me. I have asked. There's a mover. There's a seconder. I need to put the motion for the vote. All those in favour, members, that the motion to be put. All in favour to have the motion be put. All against. Division. Division. That is that is lost. Debate continues. So we'll go ahead with the debate. <coughs> you can't call a division on it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. can you call the yeah, division? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So the division has been called. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Ho. Councillor Kuros. Councillor Canal. Okay. Debate ensues. Councillor Kuros, you have spoken. Any other councillors to speak? Councillor uh, Martin. Yeah, look, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, um, Martin. Acting Lord Mayor. Uh, look, it'd be easy if I just called you uh, Lord or Your Worship or something. I wouldn't make the mistake so often. Look, I, I, I'm a bit disappointed too because this is becoming a tray of this place. That is, when somebody puts a proposal forward, you attack the person and not the argument. And when that doesn't work, you throw in a furphy. And I heard the furphy several times tonight that we don't have anything to do with development, that's just cap. Well, look, Acting Lord Mayor, that's not the case. This, this council often deals with matters related to development. Uh, we recently dealt with a policy on encroachments, which may cause significant costs to developers. In fact, there has been debate about amending that in a way that might assist developers. Now, I believe it is possible that developers spoke to elected members. I have no idea, but it is possible. And under this proposal, we'd be required to declare that. The council recently dealt with an approach in confidence uh, from a developer about acquiring a piece of land from them. And at a multi-million dollar cost, uh, assuming the developer um, uh, accepted the proposal, um, the developer was going to ask us to maintain the land. Now. That was another developer proposal, not related to CAP. And it is possible, I have no idea, but it is possible the developer spoke to a councillor or two. Now, this proposal would ensure that was recorded. The council was recently approached by the Crows about taking over the aquatic centre and demolishing it and building a headquarters on Park 2. Now, I believe it's possible that the Crows had spoken to a councillor or maybe more outside of the meetings that occurred at council. I don't know, but it is possible. And had that occurred, this mechanism would require them to declare that. Now, they're just a couple of instances. I've got to tell you, in a term of council, it comes up constantly. Now, no one's demonizing developers. Uh, developers are some of my best friends, uh, acting Lord Mayor. Um, I don't use the D word. But I do understand, as some of you don't, that developers always have an interest in council approving what comes forward. For them, it's about making money. There's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the proposal of development. But what is wrong is that we are not prepared to embrace a proposal that would simply require us to declare a conversation. And Acting Lord Mayor, if this isn't successful, if this bid fails, it will reflect poorly on all of us, all of you. And if it fails, I'll be moving or I'll support a move from somebody else that we create a voluntary register so that those of us who do think that this is common sense can add our names to it. And you who don't agree with it, if you think it's crazy, you don't want to be part of that, you don't think transparency of that nature is necessary, you don't have to take part. But those of us who do take this seriously are more than happy to do it. I'll certainly be declaring every time I speak to a developer, I have no problem with that. And the reason I have no problem is I have nothing to fear from that, just as none of you have. If you are dealing with people and you are prepared to declare it, there is no problem. 
And that is all this measure is proposing, just a declaration of what you've done, who you've spoken to, and in what context. I can't see a problem. Councillor Martin, thank you. Uh, Councillors, any other comments before I pass on to Councillor Sims to sum up? Councillor Sims, I might just make a quick comment, if that's okay. Look, I've heard the debate tonight um, and valid points uh, with regards to many of the discussions. Um, I too do not support uh, this current um, motion before us for the reasons that have been stated by many council members, but also specifically, uh, I know personally I've been lobbied by many people in our community, including hundreds of hospitality businesses to get rid of outdoor dining. Uh, that is a significant impost and cost on those businesses and we as a council have made a decision to do that. I'm not forced um, to disclose that I've met with a hospitality business, just like I'm not forced to meet with a community group uh, that potentially wants a park improved in their precinct, which also increases the valuation of their property. There's all those things to consider. As, as elected members, we have an obligation to declare conflicts, to do the right thing. That's why we've been elected to that role. I believe there's enough systems in place for that to occur. And I think the extreme of that will actually deter and cause a division uh, in our community. Um, and that's why I'm not specifically supportive of this. Councillor Sims, I'll hand over to you to sum up. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Look, um, I must say I'm quite shocked uh, and dismayed by the uh, reaction to this. Councillor Hyde is correct. Um, there is a pattern that emerges in these meetings. That is, I talk to the community about an idea that I have, a progressive measure that I want to take this council, and then I sit through about half an hour of abuse as people denigrate me personally for daring to offer an idea that may not accord with their worldview. Well, if the intention of that pattern of behaviour is to try and silence me or to silence the people I represent, be, make no mistakes, councillors, I have no intention of shutting up. Um, so keep it up. It's not going to change my advocacy and uh, I make absolutely no apologies for being a strong advocate in this place for transparency and accountability. And uh, you can attack me personally all you like. I have broad shoulders. Um, but it is disappointing um, to see council members going down this path. Look, uh, to me, this is a, a no-brainer for the council, and I think uh, Councillor Martin's proposal is a good one. Um, you know, if this doesn't get over the line tonight, um, then I'm happy to support a voluntary register, and I'd encourage other members to voluntarily sign up. What are members of this council so afraid of? We have nothing to hide. Why not put this information into the public view? The other pattern that emerges here is members of this council usually say, oh, what you're doing will have no impact. Yep, I'm vehemently opposed to it. Well, if it will have no impact, why not support it? If in doubt, butt out. Don't get in the way of the community getting more transparency and accountability. It's a missed opportunity for this council. Based on the discussion tonight, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, I suspect the vote on this will be very close. Um, and it may well fall on you to cast the deciding vote. And if that is the case, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, I extend to you the hand of conciliation. I know there has been some division on this council, but there is an invitation to work together on this to uh, try and deal with an important democratic reform. And so I'd encourage you, if it comes down to the wire, to exercise your casting vote in favour of this proposal so that we can begin a new era of transparency and accountability in this city. I think it's a great opportunity for us. I'd encourage all councillors to support it and you also uh, acting Lord Mayor to come on board. Uh, it would be a uh, powerful statement from your time in the chair. So I encourage all members to, uh, to support this. Let's end the nasty personality politics, focus on the merits of the proposal. And I think this is a proposal that most members of our community would agree with and would expect this council to support. Thank you, Councillor Sims. With that, I'll put Councillor Sims' motion to you. All those in favour of that motion? Four, five. All those against? Five. Did you call division before I cast? No. Yeah, I'll cast against the current motion. So this motion fails. You can call a division, Councillor Moran. Councillor's division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Kira, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. Move on to the next item, members. Councillor um, Moran. Sorry. 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 Sorry
So, members, uh, we've dealt with that item. We'll move on to 11.2, Council Moran, motion on notice, roof gardens in the city of Adelaide. Could I ask permission for a uh, addition of two words, Lord Mayor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor? Um, sure. Um, just uh, let me know what they are and I'll ask advice for you. I'd like, possible. after the word produce, to say and other gardens. Okay. Um, That's not considered a significant variation to the motion, so there's no problems there. Uh, Councillor, I might also uh, assist you, if that's okay, before you get a, a mover, um, if you want to consider, given the advice that's been provided from administration with regards to the guiding principles around 88 O'Connell and Central Market Arcade, you may wish to keep or remove those two assets uh, if that compromises your motion, but I'll leave that completely up to you before you seek a seconder. Uh, I suppose that just makes it not specific. So it doesn't really change the meaning. I'm happy to delete those. Okay, so Councillor Moran, you're deleting 88 of Connell Street and Adelaide Central Market Arcade. So I'll read the motion. Uh, the council requests administration vet in investigate the inclusion of produce and other gardens on the roof, roofs of its own property assets, car park and development sites, um, as has recently been done in Melbourne. No, okay, so me. just before you do, I might need to seek a seconder uh, to that motion first. So Councillor Sims seconded. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. Uh, now I'm going to do an unusual thing because I really am very upset about the nature of the debate in this um, chamber tonight. Uh, Councillor Sims' shoulders, uh, shoulders might be broad, but I, I find this is so, so distressing, the block voting and the personal abuse. So I'm going to do the unusual move uh, with my motion. I gather that the team at Adelaide will be voting uh, as a team and my motions really have no chance. I don't want to waste my time and my mental health having to be slanted and, and uh, sl um, as, as the, my colleague has been. So I move that the motion be put. Um, can't double, you can't move a double motion, Councillor. I'll move the motion. Um, yeah, so I've firstly got to deal with the motions before me. So I've got a motion from Councillor Moran to move. Do you wish to speak to your motion, Councillor Moran? Or you've spoken to it? Spoken to it. So Councillor Sims, as a seconder, would you like to speak to the motion? Just uh, very briefly, I want to commend Councillor Moran for putting this forward. Um, I think this is a great opportunity. It's one that's in line with uh, Council's focus on improving greening in the city. Um, we've been doing a lot of work in this regard. I think this would be a really great addition and um, I'd be very excited to see what administration comes back with. Um, I have seen the uh, gardens in Melbourne. Um, they do really beautify the city and uh, I think it would look terrific here in Adelaide. Councillor Martin, you flagged you'd like to move the motion to be put. Oh no, look, I'm, the debate's going quite well at the moment. I'm quite happy for Councillor Moran to sum up if no one's going to speak. Councillors, anyone would like to speak for or against the motion? Councillor uh, Kuros. Um, actually, I too have seen these uh, uh, rooftop gardens in, uh, in Melbourne, and I think they're an excellent idea. Um, it's something that I have actually seen on, uh, you know, in social media, and I think I posted it on my on my Facebook page about a couple of months ago because it, it's it's grown strong in Melbourne, and I think it's something that we really should consider uh, here in Adelaide. Um, and uh, I fully support this motion. So um, I think it's a great idea in regards to um, helping our environment. Um, and also uh, it might even encourage uh, strata corporations to include that in their um, in their apartment block. Who knows where it's going to go. So I think it's a, it's a great, great initiative. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. Councillors, any other councillor? Councillor? Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm not sure if I can vote for this or vote against this. As my personally, I like to talk produce garden, but I know it. By law, it's actually not cheap. So I'd just like to ask some questions and address some of my concerns. Would that be all right? So, Councillor, just to assist you, the uh, Councillor is asking for a request of administration to investigate. So yep. potentially you might have all those questions answered through an investigation process. I'm certain that the administration is not going to have answers with regards to the costs 
at this meeting, but potentially this report will, will have some of that information for you. But that's just a prelude. I'm happy to provide you the opportunity to ask questions if you wish it's necessary. Well, just one last thing then. Like, does it mean if this motion passed and uh, whatever, let's like, say, does it mean that the council have to run that as a business? Um, I would probably defer that question to Councillor Moran. I'm not sure what her intent is uh, with regards to the motion. I think the motion is quite clear. It doesn't mention running businesses. It's an early step in the process. Thank you. So that's clear enough for you, Councillor? All right, thank you. Thank you. Councillors, any other remarks? I'll pass back on to Councillor Moran to some, sorry, Councillor Donovan, I barely saw you there. No problem. Per Just briefly, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, I absolutely support Councillor Moran's uh, proposal particularly with the addition of and other, just to broaden it out a little bit so that um, potentially when I saw the, uh, the motion, what came to mind for me was all of the research around um, urban microclimates and how greening of rooftops does actually considerably, even with very small patches, lead to um, drops of multiple degrees in the surrounding area. So uh, if there was, if it is cost effective, and certainly that's the, the whole purpose of the report, if it were cost effective, if it were doable, if it was structurally possible, that we could look at ways of incentivising this, um, and, I know, and I know that this has previously been done in other um, grant processes, and if we were ourselves able to um, support this more directly not only do we get the benefits of the um, urban microclimate reduction we get as we start to achieve some scale, the carbon sequestration, we uh, contribute to all of our goals around sustainability um, and carbon neutral Adelaide. So I think on multiple levels, if there is some possibility of this, then it moves us towards our goals. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, Councillor Moran, to sum up? Summed up. Summed up, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against, that is carried unanimous surprise there for you, Councillor Moran. Um, <laughs> item 11.3, Councillor Moran, motion on notice, parking at 88 O'Connell Street. Um, Councillor, if you wish to um, either read your motion or take it as read and seek a seconder. Uh, Council investigate portioning off an area of 88 O'Connell Street and provide to provide free permits to business owners and workers to park their vehicles during working hours. Um, I think I've said what I wanted to in the previous motion. I think this fits it's well. I think this fits well with the other um, initiatives. Uh, really, traders just want parks. They want parks for themselves. They want parks for their customers. Um, and uh, the, at the moment, the parking provisions and the previous motion makes no provisions for them at all, and I think this does. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sims, as a seconder. Uh, yes, um, I'm very supportive of what um, Councillor Moran is, is trying to do here. I think it complements the motion that we passed um, previously, and so let's, um, let's do it. Councillor Kuros. I just want to declare that I have an actual conflict of interest on the basis that my partner has uh, three businesses adjacent to the site and therefore potentially um, I could be benefiting from this motion. Um, so I'd like to participate in the de de debate because I feel I have relevant information to contribute. However, because of my actual conflict, I will not vote on this matter. Thank you, Councillor. Um, sorry, I didn't afford you the opportunity to speak before. I wasn't sure if you were seconding or, uh, or speaking. Next time, councillors, if anyone does have a conflict, please just call a point of order, rise and declare that conflict before the debate occurs. Um, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, um, Acting Lord Mayor. And, and thank you to Councillor Moran for this uh, motion. Um, look, it is complimentary with the motion that we passed earlier this evening. I've got to say, though, um, I, I'm pessimistic about the previous motion uh, because that will lead to long delays. We have to go through some sort of consultation process, no doubt, at the end of it all, and it may come to naught. This at least gives us a process that can be, according to the advice we received, launched immediately, and it does provide some benefit to uh, traders in the area. Um, I, like everybody else, I'm pretty tired of being told things are complicated. This should be fairly easy and the cost to council should be minimal. Um, and indeed, we've already seen reports suggesting that 
uh, a possible uh, ceiling of that car park uh, might be done for as little as $50,000, which of course is nothing compared to the money that we splash around the place uh, to the benefit of other areas and precincts. Um, this, I think, uh, would be welcomed by the traders of North Adelaide. Councillors, does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Ho and Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Attorney Lord Mayor. Well, I am a bit disappointed that Councillor Murray moved this motion. I will oppose this motion based on the following three reasons. First, City of Adelaide spent ratepayers' money to purchase this land, 88 O'Connell Street. Bear in mind, it is the ratepayers, the ratepayers from all wards, including Central Ward and South Ward, who pays for it. I don't understand why Councillor Moran only consider helping traders from North Adelaide. I would like to seek support from all Central Ward councillors and South Ward councillors to vote this down. If you are really the representative of your wards, then speak out loud for those business in your ward. This is not fair. This is double standard. Second, public money for public good. If we are going to offer this site for traders in North Adelaide to use it for free or at a very low cost, then should we offer our u pass to traders in the city under the same terms? If the answer is yes, we might be bankrupt very soon. If the answer is no, then why should we offer ATL or Kono Street to some specific traders for free and giving them the advantages to compete with the traders in Guja Street, East End, Hart Street, Piney Street, Grove Street, and Rondo Mall? <clears throat> At last, I have a big question, big question mark on Councillor Moran's comments of all traders for North, for North Adelaide support this idea. No doubt everybody loves to have a free lunch, but giving them a free car park will not really boost their business. Instead of giving away the ratepayers' money, I think we should focus on increasing the vibrancy in the area. Let's activate the site ASAP. I'd like to ask all members not to support this motion. This is not fair and it will not help the traders in North Adelaide. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Ho. Um, Councillor Hyde. I just had a question, Acting Lord Mayor, um, uh, some of the sentiment Councillor Ho touched on. Are, are there any uh, sort of similar schemes anywhere else in the city, um, any sort of parking incentivization or anything like that for businesses outside of outside of this precinct? Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, no, there is not. Question. Go ahead, Councillor Martin. Um, a question for the administration. Um, has the City of Adelaide ever provided any park free for the first hour or similar offers to uh, uh, customers? Sorry, Councillor, I'm not going to take that question. Don't answer us here. This is not relevant to this motion, Councillor. Yes, yes, it is. No, it's we, not. We're, we're talking about traders, then. not customers. So There's a big difference. I'd ask you to not waste time with this, Council. Uh, 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 Acting Lord Mayor. If you'd like to ask a question with regards to this motion, I'll take it. I'm asking a question. In the context of this motion, so this has has free parking ever been provided to traders? at a, a City of Adelaide U Park yep. for traders or for people visiting? Yep. Uh, we don't distinguish. Has that ever happened? Yep. At the U Parks and at the Central Market, uh, I can answer the question for you, at Rundle Mall U Park and, and the Rundle Street U Park. And how many occasions of these, uh, the, we're talking about Central at Mall the Central here. Market, at the Central Market, uh, Central Market, uh, the central markets. I see. And can I ask the question, do those free parking arrangements distinguish between traders and business operators uh, uh, and uh, business patrons? Well aware of the answer, councillor, without wasting council's time. Those are open to the public, everyone, traders, non-traders, council, everyone. You, you can park in there yourself if you wish. And have they been offered on many occasions over the years? Of course they have. You know the answer to that as well. Well, thank you. Yeah, you do. Um, councillor Kira. A question, Acting Lord Mayor, um, to the CEO. This motion uh, requests an investigation at this stage. Uh, could that investigation, if this motion were to get up, uh, could that investigation uh, address uh, the issues of um, parity or potential subsidy uh, that is being applied in this instance uh, relative to other, uh, other 
high streets, other uh, uh, parking situations in the rest of the city. Um, can that be addressed to some extent? And uh, can the um, can the means by which, in that investigation, can the means by which this potentially be monetised? Uh, is it also feasible for those things, given that they're fairly, they seem to be the, the, the major leg of concern, can they be addressed as part of this investigation? Do you want to try to attempt that here? I think I'll get Tom to respond to that. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, certainly as part of the investigation, we can certainly consider that um, in terms of the, the two questions that you've raised. Um, the only thing would be is the first question would be a little bit problematic because we do not offer that sort of activity to other traders within the city of Adelaide. So what we'll be doing is judging this, the merit of this. There was parking uh, uh, notionally on that space before provided by the private operator or the owner of that property. So we'd have to look at that and see how that actually responded. Um, Councillor uh, Kuros, you're asking a question. Uh, you may speak, but you can't vote, as you've said before. Go ahead. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, it is clear from the Council's recommendation that they've already explored the option and they've provided us very clear advice that this cannot be done. Um, it says here that non-auxiliary car parks are a non-complying form of development. It says uh, uh, there will be uh, perceptions of inconsistency, bias and uh, determination which may be associated with the development. So, I mean, it's clear from the administration that um, their advice says that this should not go. This, this should not go ahead. So, I've been pushing this since December 2018. One of my first motions um, to open up the car park, um, and as part of the amendment of recommendation recommendation two, um, uh, to open up the car park for the EOI for activation. And then, of course, if that's not successful, then to apply to the minister to have this car park open. So, therefore, there is. Um, a, that that uh, successful motion will produce that result. Um, I have spoken to the businesses extensively on O'Connell Street, as I've mentioned them before. Um, they don't see that as a key uh, to success for their businesses to open it up for the traders and for their staff. They want that car park open to the public. They want their customers to come in close by to their businesses and park efficiently. They don't want their staff, who they pay an hourly rate for, to park at a car park for free. It's very evident that that is not a very successful business practice. It is more successful to bring customers to your business. Um, they, they, like I said, they want car parking for their customers. They want the street activated. They want foot traffic. They want council to start listening to their needs as per the emails that we received in full where they say they want customers to be provided for. They don't want their staff and themselves provided for. They want their customers looked after. It's very clear and they're messaging to me that I speak to them extensively on O'Connell Street Weekly, this is what they want. So I, I, I put it to you to support the businesses and give them what they want to give them efficiency for their customers to come and park on O'Connor Street. Thank you, Councillor Cross. Councillor Hyde, you had your hand up. You did speak. Are you asking a question? Did I speak? I think I just asked a question. And Sorry, I have, I have, I have Go another ahead. question. I have Go another ahead. Question. Um, we're referring to free permits for business owners and workers to park their vehicles. Could administration just provide us with some guidance on which business owners and workers? Is there, is there, a, is there a line that would be drawn somewhere? The point of Councillor order. Martin, this the question has been on. asked of the administration, please, We're not of you, Councillor. Councillor Hyde, thank you for your question. CEO, can you please answer? Thanks, Tom. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, I think, first of all, we'd probably seek clarity from the, the councillor who's moved the motion, because uh, we're talking North Adelaide, or we're talking the O'Connell Street Precinct. Um, so we'd need a clear delineation in regards to that, and how we would determine who actually is entitled to this sort of parking option. Do you require that clarification now, CEO? Sorry? Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, yeah, it would be useful for us to have some clarity over exactly who would be provided to. So. So that would be useful. Councillor Brown, would you like to? Only, only O'Connell Street traders? 
thought of any others, but uh, I'd be open to suggestions. I mean, it's based in a residential suburb. There aren't that many bits, you know, it's only on Common Street, really. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, look, there is a clause that we need, I need to refer to. It's basically the development application that we would need to lodge would need to demonstrate that the car parking is genuinely ancillary uh, to the existing businesses. So that's a test we would apply. Perhaps that's the best answer. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hyde, does that answer your question? Uh, sort of. Do you have any other questions? Mm, no, I'd like to speak. Would you like to speak? I think there's some. Uh, no, Councillor uh, Curis has already spoken. You had the mic. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Acting Lord Mayor. And I think um, Councillor Moran's side there, Councillor Munn, indicated that perhaps um, that hadn't been fleshed out. Of course, I did assume that, yes, we we're talking about a construct, but if you actually look at the black and white letters on the screen there, you'll see that it isn't clear. Um, and I think, bearing in mind the comment that administration have provided, um, uh, and the fact that we're not actually sure who this would apply to, um, and the fact that um, spoken about subsidies for businesses, we've spoken about the disparity between what other businesses get and of course we've had advice on and what we actually know is a real issue here is that the customers don't have anywhere to park. Um, this motion, to borrow a phrase from earlier today, I'd say it's very muddle-headed, I think was the language used. Um, as such, and bearing in mind um, the administration's comment, I, I can't support this and uh, I would implore on the chamber to not support it as well. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Abraham ZFI followed by Councillor Canole. Members, look, I'd like to remind you it's 10 past eight. Um, so if you have any specific itching motions to speak to or for or against, there's been enough debate on these issues, but go ahead if you've got new points to raise. Councillor Abraham ZFI. Uh Yes, thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, there, there is uh, one thing that I will want to uh, point out. There's been constant mentions of uh, uh, speaking with, uh, with traders. Um, I'd just like to point out that I did engage with a, a stakeholder, and this particular stakeholder uh, operates about six businesses on O'Connell Street, and uh, that stakeholder has, uh, has told me that uh, uh, providing a free car park for the traders and staff isn't the answer. Um, going back to what uh, Councillor Kouros uh, 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 brought in earlier uh, tonight, uh, in terms of activating the site, um, I think that will uh, um, uh, hopefully answer and satisfy what a lot of uh, traders are looking for on O'Connell Street. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Is that a Councillor Canal? Um, obviously to this long debate, just a couple of a couple of points and one, uh, first of all, in regards to the one hour free parking, I don't know any employee that's allowed to work one hour um, anywhere and uh, with, the, with regards to the awards, etc. But if I look at here, I mean, I am all for activating and all for assisting businesses in Adelaide because that's the premise why I'm here. But if we think about it, I found it really odd and, and it is confusing to me that in one hand we take away the 10 hour car parks, which is basically uh, used by people who work in the city. And we do that at the extremities of the city uh, so that, and you know, and I don't have enough of my own employees that, that come into town uh, and buy, park there and uh, go and buy bike or walk. And I have many of them. The point here I'm making is, uh, that we take away because we find that intrusive to people who live there and there can be an argument both ways. But and then we now offer them, uh, the, the, the employees, a prime position in the middle of the, a, a business precinct which we're trying to get customers. And look, I, I don't mind if my employees have to go further away. They choose that and they, they'll find ways to get into work. But here is an opportunity. First, let us concentrate on getting whatever activation and all that we want to have in this space. Uh, we can talk about car parking as, as a, a point after this point. It's simply because uh, we need uh, our customers, we need people to visit the city. And if we think, I mean, with the previous motion, if it's a car park, well, welcome to the football. And, uh, you know, that'll be nothing for the North Adelaide traders either. Um, so let us let's just keep it clean and simple. Let us talk about one thing after another, do the activation of that. And let it, if we're going to talk about our employees and businesses, let us find spaces for them if we want to at, at, a, at, a, at a distance. Because I don't know of any of my places that I run that I want my staff parking in the, in the prime positions in front of my shop, because Lord knows that's not for them. Councillor Canole, thank you very much. Councillors, any other discussion or debate with regards to this item? Excellent. Councillor Moran, sum up. Well, I pulled the wrong motion uh, for Team Adelaide to vote on block. I have never heard anything like it in my life. We have, to start with, let's just clear a few points up. The first motion won't give you this. The first motion, if the EOI gets up, 
is ancillary parking to the event, only when there's an event there. Then the third part of the motion, the additional part, was that we just turn it into a public car park. That means the traders don't get any advantage and you actually argued against that. You said, no, I want to get the activation. I don't want to turn it into a big car park. Now you do want to turn it into a big car park. It is a waste of my time being here to explain these things when you know that what we want. Mary's, Councillor Kouros's um, weekly visits to O'Connell Street, where she neither works nor lives, is astounding. I live in... Point of order has been called, Councillor. Go ahead. What's your point of order, Councillor? Well, I don't live there, no, I don't know if Councillor Ray lives on O'Connell Street, but we are, my partner has businesses on O'Connell Street, so I do... She neither lives nor works in North Adelaide. I live in North Adelaide. Councillor Kuros, please, you've responded with a point of order. It's been noted. It's Councillor Moran's point. So Councillor Kuros says she visits weekly. Um, I visit daily, multiple times daily. I speak to all the traders and I can assure you her boyfriend would like his waiters to not have to move their cars every hour or two. Every trader. Councillor Moran, please don't make assumptions. Please. I am said I'm sure he'd like it. Point of order, um, Deputy Law Mayor, but you know, this person which she has here. Point of order is. Well, she's correcting you on public record, Councillor Moran, so He's maybe my keep. my de facto husband, so could we not my boyfriend? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Um, Councillor Moran, family. please try to speak and sum up to your. I mind. speak to the traders every day uh, because I shop and have worked and live there all the time um, and I can assure you that there is not a trader. You show me a trader tomorrow that says I am not massively inconvenienced by the parking restrictions in North Adelaide. I am not massively inconvenienced by having to pay exorbitant rates for myself in the, in the mattress car park. I'm not massively inconvenienced by people getting parking fines because they haven't been able to leave the business to move their car. I know no such trader. They all would like it. It is not complicated. It is O'Connell Street and environs. It is a O'Connell Street is the shopping street that goes through North Adelaide. Would you like an extension of time? Yes, I would. Uh, hand, please. Thank you, it's a shopping street that goes through North Adelaide. It is not rocket science to find out which traders. We had a car park there for 10 years on the mattress side. I'm not sure it was mattresses then. And it ran very well. We have an opportunity. Councillor, again, on public record, can I ask the CEO to rectify that? Because there was an email sent to you that is complete contrary to what you just said. Through you, Acting Lord Mayor, the car park that you're referring to was not a lawful car park and in fact council staff were intending to take action prior to the matter being, the, the, the land being transferred to council. It was there for 10 years. It was there for 10 to 15 years. Um, I wasn't saying that it was legal, I was just saying that the, it was easy for Mr Macris to work out which the permits were they used to it. They're pretty much the same traders. So it's not really rocket science, but as I said, if uh, councillors from the central or the uh, southern ward had an empty site that was being developed and activated, owned by council, and they came to this council and said our traders would like a car park. If you want to charge them a bit, that's fine. I would say go ahead, do it. But I would like, and I will door knock every trader and every business person in Melbourne Street and O'Connell Street tomorrow morning, and I will bring you the traders that say, no, go away, Anne. I don't want my staff to be, um, to have parking, convenient parking because you've locked down the streets. I know no such trader because no such trader exists. And I can assure young Councillor Hyde that if there's a block that council controls for three or four years in his ward, I would happily annex off a small section. The activation can happen, the paid car park can happen. But what I'm shocked is people arguing one thing for one motion when it's their team member and then arguing the exact opposite 
You said, Council, no, you didn't want a car park on the Laconia site. You wanted activation. But suddenly, you do want a car park. It is absolutely nonsense, but it's very disappointing. I feel like resigning from this council is the worst council I've ever been on. People that don't live, they don't know their areas, they're, they're attacking other councillors. You should be ashamed of yourself. Councillor Moran, I put that motion to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Moran's motion? That's four. Against? Councillor uh, Kuros, you cannot vote. That motion is one, so that motion is carried. We move on to the next item. Motions without notice. Hang on, did you say that was one? Yes, it was. Well, because she can't vote, Councillor Coles can't vote. Um, item 12, motions without notice. Councillors, is there any motions without notice that are urgent business? Moving on to item 13, exclusion of the public. If I could ask um, councillors to move 13.1, exclusion of the public with regards to two items. 14.1.1, recommendation of the committee in confidence with regards to recommendation one, city of music laneway naming, and item 14.1.2, advice recommendation of the audit committee in confidence, advice one, to know update on activities at the strategic risk and internal audit group meetings. I need two separate motions, one for the first one, Councillor Sims moved, seconded by Councillor Moran. All those in favour, all those against, that is carried. Item 14.1.2, again, I request a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Seconded by Councillor Canole. Again, I'll put that, all those in favour. Can I get a clear show of hand, Councillors? Councillor Kerr, thank you very much. That is clear, that is also carried. If I could ask members of staff or any members of the public that are not directly affiliated with this item to please remove themselves from the chamber. Thank you, members. I declare the meeting closed at 8.19 p.m. and I thank you for your attendance.